Once you get to the point where you feel like you can't do it anymore, that's when it's time to have the baby, and you did it. Is that the first? Is that the first? Yeah. Hi. Closer. I wanna stay here with you. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. If you're new to my channel, I'm a stay-at-home mom of now three kids. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, with my husband Travis. And I've been vlogging a little over a year now, family vlogs, lifestyle videos, everything motherhood pretty much. And today I'm here to share with you guys my natural birth story. I've been posting my pregnancy updates with baby number three here. This is Ryan. And I've been posting my pregnancy updates since we found out we were pregnant. It's been such a fun journey. It's been so fun to log everything in this pregnancy and keep you guys updated, and I can't believe he's finally here. He was born on October 19th, 2019, so he's now 18 days old, which is absolutely crazy. I can't believe he's almost three weeks old. He's an absolute dream baby so far. So, I had posted my natural birth vlog a um, couple days after I came home from the hospital with Ryan, and it was definitely a difficult video to post because it was raw, it was real, it was me in pure pain. Um, I had an all natural birth with no epidural. I went into the birth wanting it that way. I had a natural birth with my second child also. And it's just what I wanted for my third as well. And I knew it was going to be painful, but it is definitely one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my entire life. Um, I do think this birth was even harder than my second and there were some scary afterbirth complications that I'm going to get into as well. The reason I wanted to sit down and do this video to share with you guys the whole story was because one, it wasn't very, the vlog wasn't very documented, like we weren't really talking through it, it was kind of just me going through my labor in a lot of pain and we weren't exactly supposed to film the actual birth and the delivery so we had the camera set up to the side so we had audio but we couldn't really see much and then obviously I did not record anything that happened after and that's where I think the scary story kind of starts so I really want to sit down and fill you guys in on how my labor and delivery went so I'm going to put a little trigger warning here because the end is kind of graphic and um, it was kind of a scary situation and if anyone's ever gone through something similar I just want to make sure I'm not triggering any you know past emotions or anything because it was something scary that I had to go through thankfully I am just completely relieved that everything was okay and it's over and I have no you know PTSD from it or anything like that and I'm just grateful for how everything turned out I had an amazing doctor I love my doctor and it all ended up being you know fine and the baby is absolutely perfect and he's amazing and mommy came out okay too if you'd like to hear all about my natural birth experience and my natural birth story then keep watching so i was 39 weeks and three days pregnant i believe when i started having my contractions and i knew labor was close um the one thing that tipped me off that made me realized I was probably going, going to go into labor really soon was I lost my mucus plug. I've never seen this with my other two pregnancies. I've never noticed it. I had no clue what, even what it really was. And I noticed it when I went to the bathroom the day before I went to labor. And I remember saying, if this continues and I keep seeing this, it's going to be, I have a feeling it's going to be this weekend. I just told my family that. I told Travis that. And I saw it again the next morning when I went to the bathroom and I just felt very crampy and off that day. And I had a weird feeling that it was gonna be very soon if not that day. So that night we were watching a movie as a family. It was Halloween, right before Halloween, so we were watching Goosebumps and I started getting cramps. And I even called my grandma on the phone. We talk on the phone like every single day. And I was telling her, I was like, this is weird because I get, you know, crampy at night off and on but this is like they're kind of painful 
I didn't want to seem too dramatic if it wasn't anything yet though so I kind of just like waited around to see and they started getting stronger and they kept coming and I told Travis I said I, I don't know but this might be something this might be happening and of course he kind of pushed it off he was like I don't know this doesn't seem like you know how you were with your other with the other two and I reminded him I was like well this is still the very beginning obviously it's not gonna be super painful for a little bit but they actually got really strong really fast so I you know the kids fell asleep of course I always go into labor in the middle of the night or really late at night this is a third pregnancy that would be like in the middle of the night into the morning but I started walking around and then we, we got my contraction app ready started timing them and I you know started I got my camera out I wanted to like just make sure if it was filling everyone in in case this was labor and they started coming I think they started off like a few minutes apart which you know it's my third baby so I'm not really surprised but I still wasn't sure it was all on my back I always have back labor it's so painful I don't know if you've ever experienced back labor but it's awful and in between contractions I was still getting awful lower back pain so the pain in my back really wasn't letting up so then once the contractions started getting stronger I decided I wanted to get into the bathtub and kind of help with the pain this is what i did with my second birth as well and i prefer laboring as home at home as much as i can because you know you don't want to be at the hospital if you're too early and not really dilating because they can either send you home or you could just be not as comfortable and you know be in pain at the hospital because i did not plan on getting an epidural so i did want to be at home as long as possible except i had to be careful since this is my third I had to be careful that I wasn't waiting too long because I did not want to have a baby in the car or at the parking lot or in triage, anything like that. So we're in the tub and Travis was with me and he said, um, your app says we should already be heading to the hospital. So the contractions app lets you know when your contractions get a certain amount of minutes apart and for a certain amount of time, you know, they, they let you know when you should be heading there. So that was kind of freaking me out a little bit because I was still unsure. I was still like not 100% sure I was in active labor or was going to be in active labor. So after they got really strong to where I almost was, I could barely talk through them very quickly, not even a full hour. And I was already at that point, Travis was getting kind of worried. He was like, okay, we need to go. So I kind of don't want to make this too, too, too long. So I'm going to try and rush through this part a little bit. So we get to the hospital at 1.30 a.m. And I was at a five, so obviously I was staying and I was in labor and the contractions were already super painful, like I said. And I told them I wanted a birth ball and I did not want to be in the bed the whole time. I wanted to try and walk around. And I thought I was gonna be able to walk the halls, but turns out I was in so much pain so f close together with the contractions that I just stayed in the room and had to switch, switch positions as much as possible to like maintain the pain. So I went from the birth ball to hands and knees on this stool that was in there, um, holding on to Travis's back. Um, my sister was in the room as well, but she kind of was just, you know, off to the side watching everything. Travis is obviously my support. And it was just really painful. So obviously. I wanted to dilate as fast as I as fast as possible, so I knew in order to do that I needed to keep moving, I needed to try different positions because if you're just laying in one spot, it's gonna prolong your dilating. So they came in to check me, I think at that point I was at a seven or eight, and my doctor came in, he was on call that weekend, thankfully, so he came in and he said, If you want me to break your water, I can and I said, Will that help? make everything a little bit faster and he said absolutely so i said okay let's break my water and that was the one of the strangest feelings because for some reason i don't remember feeling my water breaking with my other two and he broke my water and of course warm gushing water coming out but i didn't realize how much was going to come out and for how long so with every contraction from then on water was just pouring out of me and i remember saying to the nurse with every contraction I just feel it gushing and she said that's because your body's literally like squeezing itself so your water's just gonna continue coming out it was not pretty I was on my hands and knees on the bed and I felt like I was just soaking the bed with every contraction and I think at one point I lost more mucus plug I had Travis look because I felt something come out I didn't know what it was and he said oh yeah it's like a you know TMI but mucus type something was coming out with a contraction 
and um, you know at this point I was pretty much in extreme pain and I thought I couldn't handle any more pain I was telling him if this isn't over soon I, I can't do it and I didn't know if I was gonna you know I didn't know how much longer I could go basically it was very hard so at one point I was feeling a lot of pressure in my butt area and I knew he was getting very very low and I wanted them to check me again but I kind of was pushing it off because I was afraid if I if they told me I was still at an eight that I would get too discouraged and just freak out more so I kind of waited as long as I could but then I ended up telling them okay we need to check me so Travis got the nurse now this nurse she was so sweet but she could not find my cervix and I was in agony at this point I did not want to lay back on my back I didn't want to have them check me I was in so much pain but obviously I don't have a choice so she's feeling around for over a minute and I'm like wanting to scream like please just find it tell me what I am this is I literally was so mad but I of course I'm the type where even if I'm in pain and mad I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yell or say anything <laughs> rude to the nurse but she couldn't find it she said it was too slippery and wet up there and you know that was discouraging because I wanted to know how dilated I was and if I was at a 10 or not so she said I'm gonna have to go get your doctor so she left the room went to get my doctor and he came in and the second he checked me he said okay she's ready and I knew I was because I was on hands and knees on all fours before this the nurse had me kind of up against the back of the bed rocking my hips back and forth she said this should help to lower the baby even more and kind of help with the pain and during each contraction she wanted Travis to kind of press on my lower back and at this point nothing felt like it helped the pain I tried sitting up any position I was in was agony honestly like nothing was helping so I just knew at this point I've heard someone say this before once you get to the point where you feel like you can't do it anymore that's when it's time to have the baby and you did it so I was at that point I felt like I could not go any longer I was literally thinking in my head you're gonna have to put me under sedation or something if this isn't over soon because I just can't do it anymore and but once he said she's ready it was an excitement but also a fear because I knew pushing was also gonna be painful and the baby coming out was gonna be painful but I knew it was so much closer to meeting him and to the end result so they uh, you know fixed the bed um, what's also great I thought about this labor this delivery was they had me kind of propped up the bed was propped up and I was sitting up almost instead of laying completely flat like I had in my like I was in my other two births so I do think that helped a lot with pushing honestly I feel like that should be standard for a woman pushing out a baby is to either be squatting or sitting and um you know they had me start pushing and with the first push it honestly wasn't that painful I actually felt like it was helping with the pain because I did have that pressure to push I felt like I was pushing already before I even started so actually getting to push in that position I feel like helped a ton and after the first push the doctor did say okay he came down a lot and you should be ready he should be coming out within the next couple pushes so that was super exciting and helpful to know that it wasn't gonna take me that long to get the baby out then by the next contraction I pushed again and this is where everyone was really you know yelling for me to keep going because I could see the baby's head already and it was really close and happening so fast and that's when I felt immense immense pressure and you know it's insane what it actually feels like when the baby's crowning and coming out without any medication but you know I had some crazy grunts going on and screaming and saying I can't do this and you know I was being encouraged yes you can keep going push 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 and he was out best feeling in the world to have him come out of course um, they put him right on my chest and it was just there's no feeling like it after you're in so much pain for so long and he's finally out and you're done and that's just what I wanted the whole labor I just kept picturing that one moment that I'd be done and he would be in my arms he came out seven pounds two ounces 19 inches long and just the cutest little baby I could have ever hoped for and healthy and this perfect little head so much smaller than I thought he was gonna be for some reason I really thought he was gonna be bigger than Liam at least because Kylie was eight pounds but he was super tiny and just adorable 
So once that part was over, the birth, you know, was over and they weighed him, put him on my chest. This is where the scary part kind of starts. So this is where the scary part starts for me. Um, they, I don't know if you're aware if you had a baby or not, but after you have your baby, you have to birth the placenta. So I actually felt the placenta come out. I, I don't remember if I pushed or if it just came out on its own, but I felt this big thing, not as big as a baby of course, but something slide out of me and out it went. And you know, that's what's supposed to happen. Well. They also usually press on your belly to make sure everything came out. And this is extremely painful if you had a natural birth without an epidural. And, but it's usually over pretty fast. They pressed on my stomach multiple times and every time they did, I had a lot of bleeding and it turned out it was more bleeding than normal. So I didn't know at the time but Travis said he could see the amount of blood coming out and I actually did start to feel clots coming out as well, like a lot at a time and everyone kind of looked alarmed. I remember the nurse saying, okay, you're bleeding a lot. And I think Travis at one point asked, is this a normal amount? And she said, um, she kind of didn't know what to say. She was like, not necessarily. So we're just gonna have to, you know, keep an eye on it and keep pressing on her belly. So. They kept coming in and pressing on me to the point where I was screaming and I'm not exaggerating like I was screaming bloody murder to the point where I thought it was in a horror movie and they were trying to just torture me. It was that bad. I think that one point I had two nurses at the same time pressing down on me and I remember pushing their hands off almost as if you were like it actually reminds me when I was a little kid I had to get stitches in my lip I think I was four years old and I was screaming bloody murder for them to stop because you know when you're little and you're just in so much pain you don't know what else to do well me being 27 almost 28 years old did the same thing and pushed their hands away so that part you know I almost wished I had the epidural because I wouldn't have felt all that and it would have just been a routine thing them pressing on me and trying to get the blood taken care of but the fact that I felt everything it was really 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 hard once they you know saw that the blood was continuing it was a good amount they called in two nurses that were on the floor at the time or two doctors that were on the floor at the time they weren't my doctors they were just two different doctors that were there and they came in and they tried to press on my stomach as well and then they brought in an ultrasound machine and the ultrasound machine showed that there was something stuck up in my uterus so there was placenta left in my uterus so they call it what's it called placenta they call it a retained placenta so when they not all the placenta comes out and they can't get it all out and once they saw this they tried their best to manually go inside and get the rest of the placenta out for me and having two women doctors do this i guess they had smaller hands or small shorter arms and it was <laughs> Once again, the most painful thing I've ever experienced, having someone's entire arm pretty much up inside you, trying to reach something all the way up in your uterus. I was screaming and she could not reach it. So that was awful because I just wanted this to be over. So then my doctor had to come back to the hospital and come back in my room and he said, okay, so we have two options. We can either do a DNC and put you under anesthesia. A DNC, if you don't know, is where they put you to sleep and basically vacuums out everything left in the uterus. It happens sometimes if you have a miscarriage, they have to make sure they're getting everything out so you don't risk having an infection, which can be very serious or deadly. So I immediately knew I didn't want to be put under. First of all, I've never been put under, which I know sounds crazy at my age, but I've never been put under before. And I wanted to be fully there and awake and aware for my baby who I just, I just had a baby. I want to be able to nurse him and be there for him. I didn't want any procedure like that done. But then he said, but if not, I have to try and go up there manually again and get it. And then if he couldn't get it, they'd have to put me under anyway. So I had to make a choice very fast and I chose to have him try and grab it himself. And he went up and you know, it was, took, I don't even know how long he was up there, maybe like 20 seconds, but I was once again screaming, begging him to stop. It was 
I can't even tell you. I don't want to scare anyone by this story, but this is just my story and what happened with me. This does not always happen. I don't know how rare this is, but this is just what happened to me. Thank God I have a really good doctor. It turns out he is like the number one emergency surgeon and doctor in our hospital. So he's normally called if any doctors need assistance or help with an emergency situation. So he pulled his arm back out of me and he was holding something in his hand and it was like a jelly piece of placenta. And he said, I think I got it all. Of course he said, I think, which didn't make me 100% relieved, but instead of doing another ultrasound, they said they're just gonna check on my bleeding now and if it continued to be as heavy as it was and there was probably something still left in there and they would have to take care of it afterwards. But thank God he got it all and my bleeding slowed down and was just normal bleeding from then on out because um, there was a point in between, you know, the two doctors trying to get the placenta that they put an extra IV in my hand and they told me that um, that was in case I had to have a blood transfusion, which is very scary. And they tried to like not freak me out when they told me this, but they said we want to plan to fail instead of failing to plan. So they ha it's basically, being cautious, you know, just in case I had to have a blood tr transfusion that would be available. So, oh, I forgot. So before the doctor got the rest of my placenta out, they were doing a ton of things to try to stop the bleeding. I got a shot in my thigh. I had something put in my IV that was supposed to help with the bleeding. And then I had these three pills of some sort, tablets, pills, put up my rectum, my butt. So this is very TMI. And that was uncomfortable as well, but nothing compared to what was happening before. Um, but basically I was being poked and prodded and worked on and all this without any medication. Am I glad that I had a natural birth still? Yes, absolutely. It's what I wanted. I didn't want to have to get the epidural, but this part of it would have been great to have some sort of pain management. There was also a point where this was all happening and I was begging someone to give me something. I don't care what they offered me, I was gonna take it. I needed some sort of pain medicine for this pain I was in. I almost wanted the epidural for this, just this procedures alone. I almost said, can I just have an epidural now? Cause I didn't know how long this was gonna be going on for. So all this was happening while I was trying to hold the baby and then someone ended up taking him from me because I was just, I could barely hold him with everything going on and all the pain I was in. Someone had to take him for me. Um, thank God my doctor is as awesome as he is and he took care of it all. He kept comforting me, saying, kept saying how tough I was and how he doesn't know how I did it. And just those encouraging nice words made me feel like so much better. And after that, I could finally, well they actually, they kept me in the labor and delivery room for a little bit longer than normal instead of moving me right to recovery. Um, they just want to keep checking my bleeding. So. Even though everything was done and over with and I could finally try and rest and heal and just feel better, um, I think they did give me some sort of medication to help with the pain. I don't remember. He said it would make me a little bit drowsy. I don't remember it making me drowsy, but I do remember it helping with the pain a little bit. Plus, you also have the afterbirth contractions, which are pretty painful. They feel like legit contractions and they get worse with every child you have. So I'm on baby number three, so they obviously were painful. So they gave me something for that, plus the pain from everything going on. And, um, oh, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> and the only thing after that was they, they still had to continue to come over and press on my stomach multiple times because of the bleeding. They wanted to make sure that the bleeding was slowing down. So every time they came over to me, I was just not happy about it, obviously. And they had to press pretty pretty hard and of course some blood was still coming out but nothing like what it was before and um, you know each time they came over to do that they had to press lighter and lighter so thankfully by the end of the day when they were pressing on my belly it was pretty much just like a light press which I could tolerate I just could not tolerate anymore pushing on me like like there was no tomorrow they were just pushing away so thank God 
once I was moved into recovery, I got to hold the baby and my family was there and everything was okay. And I was so relieved and so happy to have this whole thing over with. I had no idea this was gonna be how my labor and delivery went. And that's the thing, you're gonna have a birth plan and it does not always go according to how you want it to go or how you would expect it to go. Um, I knew it was going to be painful, the natural birth, which it was, but I had no idea the afterbirth was going to have these complications. He's waking back up, so he wants to be a part of the end of this video. And of course, I'm not wearing a very nursing friendly sports bra, so we got to take that off so we can feed you. So anyway, let's finish this up. I hope this wasn't too like rushed through, honestly, but... I kind of didn't want to drag it on too long. I really wanted to get into the important details, which was pretty much the end of the birth. Um, I also really quickly wanted to encourage everyone that plans on, is it too bright? Plans or wants to have a natural birth that even though I mentioned multiple times in this video that it's very painful, it's, there's nothing like feeling, there's nothing like after you deliver your baby and you've gone through that pain it's so empowering and the most amazing feeling and of course any birth is an awesome birth and you are a badass for any way you give birth whether it's c-section epidural non-epidural but if you really want to have a natural birth and you put your mind to it you can do it because i never knew i could do it and your body you just know when you're in that pain that your body is meant to do this even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it it's just a very empowering thing and it's something that gave me a lot of confidence in myself to know that i could do something like that so i just want to encourage everyone that wants to have a natural birth that you can totally do it if you really want to do it um of course there's classes and hypnobirth you can look into to help you i couldn't have done it without certain breathing techniques and positions that I, you know, that I tried. So that is it for my labor and delivery story. I'm going to, of course, link the vlog down below. Make sure you check it out and comment. Let me know what you think. I will also be doing monthly updates on this little guy and I have some other videos planned. I can't believe that after all this time, baby is finally here. It's an amazing feeling. The kids have adjusted so well to having him here. They love their little brother so much. It's so cute. I wasn't sure how Liam would adjust to him because he's only two, but he's absolutely in love with him and he's so good with him. So thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be posting my birth vlog down below. Make sure you check it out and give it a thumbs up and Subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you as part of our family and to be here with us as we continue this journey with our new little family member here. And I will see you guys in my next video.